Tirudi Umai Fai has won Senegal's presidential election with 54% of the votes, according to provisional results, while his main rival, Amadou Ba, trailed with about 35%. Views Nairobi Bureau Chief Maria Madialo is in Dakar and has this report. Provisional results show that opposition candidate Basiru Jamai Fai won by a comfortable margin, while his main rival, Amadou Ba, came in second, Dakar's Court of Appeals said on Wednesday. Amadi Juf, who leads the National Vote Counting Commission, read the results. Amadou Ba, 1,605,086 voix. He said Amadou Ba had 1,605,086 votes, meaning 35.79%, and Basiru Jamai Jahafai had 2,434,751 votes meaning 54.28 percent. Juve said that about 61 percent of 7.4 million registered voters cast their ballots. The results are expected to be confirmed by the Constitutional Council no later than Friday. But the ruling coalition's candidate, who had already conceded, congratulated his opponent earlier this week. In his first public address on Monday, the president-elect vowed to fight corruption, rebuild institutions, and reconcile the country. His victory in Sunday's elections follow a political crisis sparked by outgoing President Macky Sall's failed attempt to postpone the vote. Maria Madialo, VOA News, Dakar, Senegal. Senegalese opposition candidate by Siru Diomai Fai is on the verge of being declared winner of the March 24 presidential election. The latest provisional results from 100% of polling stations show Fai has won 54.28% of the votes. His nearest competitor, Amadou Ba, received 35.79% of the votes. Senegalese political analyst Ibrahim Makan tells me the results are a referendum on President Macky Sarr who, he says, did everything to almost derail the elections. The situation today is that finally we have all the results, the provisional results collected by uh, the judiciary, because here in Senegal, it's the judiciary that compile all the results. And uh, the announcement is made by uh, the president of the Court of Appeal of Dakar. Once the statement is read by the president of the Court of Appeal, now he is transmitting all the file to the Constitutional Court tomorrow. And from tomorrow, the Constitutional Court gives three days to any candidate who eventually has a complaint or who is not satisfied by uh, the provisional result to make a complaint so that after three days, it can look at all the complaints and make the final decision. So although these are provisional, but looking at the figures, you would say that Basiru Dumai Fai is winning or won convincingly. Yes, uh, 54% of uh, the total vote and winning at the first round. That's, I think, for somebody who is a candidate for the first time, I think it's a very important result. But one of the things that it confirmed, the idea that we had in the past that this election was more a referendum than an election. Because if you combine the result of uh, John Maifai and uh, the result of uh, Amadouba, you already have almost 90% of the vote. So it means that people wanted to get rid of a regime, to get rid of uh, a president who really did everything to make sure that the election will not take place. So there, this is the reaction of the population. So while we wait for the Constitutional Court to make the final announcement, uh, is there any movement on the part of the new leader in terms of uh, who he might be eyeing to be in his government? Well, in the media, there are speculation, but I think uh, before that, uh, what needs to be really sorted out immediately is the handover of power. Now, we all know that Macky Sall is leaving on the 2nd of April, and I think now, given the fact that the Constitutional Council has three days until 31st of uh, March, now, the 1st of April, he will make the, the final decision about the election. Regional Bloc Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, on Tuesday named South Sudanese lawyer Roren Sikobandi as special envoy for Sudan. 
A dispatch from the IGAD said Kobandi will provide pivotal good offices to engage with stakeholders and help seek common ground for warring functions in Khartoum, including guiding the bloc on the way forward. Part of his job will be to strive to put an end to the multi-tired nature of the crisis that is humanitarian security, economy, social, political, engulfing to Sudan, as so said. He will also help establish a robust coordination mechanism both in South Sudan and in the region with the sole function of settlement of the conflict in the Sudan, the source added. And while the new move signals Igadi's intent to participate in the peace search, it came several months after Khartoum announced a pause on interactions with Igad following complaints of a perceived bias. IGAD Executive Secretary Wakneth Gebeyebuhu, however, insisted the bloc was keen on seeking a diplomatic solution for the war that will clock one year on April 15th. The Executive Secretary underscores IGAD's commitment to addressing the Sudan crisis through diplomatic channels. IGAD remains dedicated to supporting peaceful initiatives aimed at enhancing regional stability and fostering cooperation, a dispatch said. The Kobandi's appointment has been long overdue as it should have been made last year. Initially, he was to report to the IGAD quartet Kenya, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Djibouti. However, after Sudanese protestations, the quartet sort of dissolved. Khartoum had specifically accused Kenyan President William Ruto, who was to lead the quartet, of bias. After that, IGAD announced arraignment with the Jeddah process, a mediation engagement led by the US and Saudi Arabia.